Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've recently started a new video series where I'm giving a number of tips on using all of the different versions of Lightroom. Last week I did the first video in this series, and in that video I gave a number of tips on Lightroom Classic. In today's video I'm going to give you a few tips on the cloud version of Lightroom. In future videos, I'll give some tips on the mobile version of Lightroom, and I'll also do more videos where I give more tips on Lightroom Classic and the cloud version of Lightroom as well. I'll have all of the videos I do in this series in a playlist. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that playlist. Now, as far as the so-called cloud version of Lightroom, let's start out with Lightroom Preferences because there's some settings there that you should be aware of. If you have a Mac, you can get to Lightroom Preferences under the Adobe Lightroom menu. If you have a PC, it's under the Edit menu. Once you open up Preferences, jump down to the Interface section. Here are some settings you might want to change. For example, if you have a hard time reading the text, the text is too small, you do have the option to make the text larger. If you change it to larger, you're going to have to close down Lightroom and restart it for the changes to take effect. Now, one thing about this though, at least on a Mac, uh, when you go from the default small text to the large text, there really isn't that much of a difference. Now, I believe this is different if you have a Windows computer. Someone maybe could mention in the comment section if that is in fact true. As a matter of fact, I think there might be more options here than just small and large if you have a Windows com computer. Again, if someone knows, I'll let us know in the comment section. I do not own a Windows computer, unfortunately. So uh, if you have a problem reading the text, you can make it bigger there. Now the panel layout, by default it's normal, but you actually could make the panel smaller. And what they're referring to is actually light, color, and whatnot. When you open them, let me just show you real quick. If you open them, they have a specific size. Um, they're okay, I could see them fine. But if you have, let's say, a 13 inch uh, laptop or something, uh, they might be too big and you have to scroll a lot to get to what you want. You may want to make those smaller. Uh, if that is the case, go to Preferences, go to that Interface tab, and you could change the panel layout from Normal to Compact. Just makes them a bit smaller. Panel Tracks. By default, it won't be on Automatic. I believe default is Manual. What this has to refer to are the panels, the left and right panels. Uh, specifically, I have mine set to Automatic. That way, if I have, say, the right panel open as I do now, and I go over and open the left panel, it will automatically close the right panel. If I open the right panel while the left panel is open, it will automatically close the left panel. If you have that set to manual, uh, you could have them both open at the same time. Then you could close one, open one, and so on. You just have to do it manually. I prefer to have it set to auto. Of course, that's just a personal preference. You can have that set as you want. Now, another tip I'd like to give you has to do with the area around the image. Uh, you may want to change this, particularly if you're printing your images and the image looks dark when you print it. That might be because the default color is this dark gray. And it's often said that if you're editing images on a darker background, uh, you tend to make them too bright so that um, you tend to not make them bright enough, I should say, so that when you print them, they're dark. So what you could do um, is right click anywhere around the image and you could see you could change it to white, light gray, gray, medium gray, the default dark gray or black. Now definitely if you're printing, you're probably gonna wanna put it to white. This will give you a good idea whether or not you have uh, the image, you know, as far as the brightness is concerned, set correctly so that when you print it, it looks okay. Again, just right click on it. You could change it to anything. A lot of people prefer to edit with a light gray background. Uh, you might want to try that. Personally, I like the dark gray default. That's what I like and that's what I go with. So uh, if you're having a problem, uh, when you share the images or if you print the images and they are a little dark, you might want to change this background color. Now, the other thing I want to talk about has to do with these three dots over here on the far right. If I click on that, you'll notice that 
there's things that I have checked. Show histogram, that's up here. By default, I believe that is not checked. I can't remember. But if you'd like to see a histogram, I do. Just make sure you have a check mark there. Uh, also, you'll see that show color calibration. Now, I know for a fact, by default, that is not checked. If that is checked, what we'll have is you'll have in the color section here, you'll have this section called color calibration. If you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, there's a tab in the develop section or develop module of Lightroom Classic called calibration. Color calibration in the cloud version of Lightroom is the exact same thing as the calibration tab in Lightroom Classic. Now, if you use Lightroom Classic several years ago and you haven't used it in a while, it was called in older versions of Lightroom Classic, it was called camera calibration. Still, it's the exact same thing. Calibration, camera calibration, and color calibration are all the exact same thing, all have the exact same controls. So I like to see that because at times I like to do some adjustments with color calibration. So I'll have that checked. The other thing that I like to have checked is single panel mode. Again, if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic, the same thing is in Lightroom Classic, except it's called solo mode. When you have single pa panel mode on, as I do, what that means is if you have a tab open, I have color open now and I open another one, say effects, it will automatically close color. If I come in and open detail, then it will automatically close effects. If you don't have that checked, you could have all of these different tabs open all at the same time. Really, again, that's just personal preference, uh, whatever it is, or however you'd like to work with the application. Uh, early on, when I started using Lightroom, I almost exclusively used it on a MacBook. And because the screen was smaller on a MacBook, a lot of times you had to scroll a lot uh, if you had a lot of these open at once. So that's how I got in the habit of using solo mode with Lightroom Classic because I didn't like to scroll. So I would have light open in, or basic panel and Lightroom Classic open. Then I'd open another panel and have it automatically close the previous one. So that's how I started to use it. I got used to it that way. That's the way I prefer to do it. Now the Final tip I want to give you is on how to set a white and black point. There's a couple different ways you could do it. Let's open up the light tab in Lightroom. And I'm going to reset the white slider. And if you want to reset a, a slider, any slider in Lightroom, there's two different ways you could do it. You just hover over the name and you can see it says reset. You could click there. Or you could just double click right on the slider itself and it will reset the slider. Now, one way you could get a white point in any version of Lightroom, actually, well, at least the cloud version in Lightroom Classic, is you could hold in the shift key. And when you hold in the shift key, you could see it says auto whites. It says auto all this. So you could get, do it, you know, all these different adjustments. But if you hold in that shift key and just click once on auto whites, you'll get an automatic white adjustment or automatic white point. Same thing, hold in the shift key, click on auto for blacks and you can get that auto adjustment for blacks as well. It's a nice quick way to get a white and black point. Another way you could do it is the way that I often do it, the way I've done it for years with Lightroom Classic, is you could hold in the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. When you do that, and then you click on, say, the white slider, the entire screen will turn black. Then you would move the white slider to the right, and you would keep moving it until you see some color come through. When you see the color come through, that means you're starting to clip those individual color channels. You can see there's some green there. I don't see any blue, but oh, there's a little blue eye now I see. So you're starting to clip the blue channel, the green channel. If there's any red, I don't see any. Oh, there's some red there too as well. You're starting to clip the red channel. Where you're clipping all three channels will be white. So where you see the white, that means I'm clipping all three channels. When you're clipping a channel with whites, that means you're blowing out the highlights in that area. If you're blowing out the highlights, that means there's no detail there at all. If I were to print this, no ink would be put down in that area at all. So personally, I don't like to clip the highlights or whites at all. So I'll hold in the Alt Option key, click on this slider, and I'll just move it till I see some color popping through. Then I'll back it off just to the point where all that color dissipates. To me, that's a perfect white point right there. Same thing for blacks. You could hold in that alt option key, click on blacks, but this time you'd move it to the left. When you do that, you'll get an entirely white screen 
you'll see some color come through when you start to move this. That means you're crushing those color channels. You're crushing the green channel, the blue channel, or the red channel. Where you see that you're, if you are crushing all three channels at the same time, you'll have black come through. You can see some black coming through. Now, personally, I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, but be aware when you are crushing the shadows, that means in those areas where there is absolute black, let's say right in here, uh, that means when you print this, there's no detail there. So it's just going to put black ink down in that area. Now, you can adjust it to taste. So what I would do is how I adjust whites, as I mentioned, is I would move the white slider with Alt, Option key in, and I would move till I see color come through it, back it off till all that color dissipates. And then to me, that's a perfect white point. For blacks, I still hold in that Alt, Option key, click on the black slider, move it to left till I see some color come through. I'll just bring it to a point, let go, see what it looks like. Then I eyeball it from this point because maybe I want a little more or a little less and I won't hold in the alt option key. I'll just eyeball it because again, I don't mind clipping or crushing the shadows um, because I think that gives my image for the scene a lot of tonal range. I'll have absolute black in the image and I have almost absolute white, not quite. And that's the way I like to do it. Now, everyone's different. I encourage you to experiment with the white and black points and see what works for you, see how uh, you could best use those to express yourself through your photography. So that's it for the tips in this video for the cloud version of Lightroom. Again, I'll do more videos where I'll give more tips on the cloud version of Lightroom, more videos where I'll give tips on the Lightroom Classic. And I haven't done any yet, but probably in the next video, I'll give some tips on the mobile version of Lightroom. So look for that very soon. I'm even going to do the web version of Lightroom in one of these videos. So look at look for that as well. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.